Hello, name's Yulia, uh, and I work in Facebook uh, in, in the containers team, uh, mostly uh, on the networking side, uh, hence BPF. Uh, so in this talk, uh, I will uh, touch uh, BPF uh, uh, system, subsystem in system D, uh, basically what's, what is already there, uh, what do we want to put there, and uh, 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 the road we need to take to reach our goals. But first of all, like I have two questions to the audience. So, like the first question is, uh, how many of you know something about BPF? What is that? Just raise questions. Oh wow. <laughs> uh, the second question is, uh, uh, how many of you like know like BPF and System D? Like, what are the applications, and uh, how many of you are familiar? Uh, yeah, uh, good, uh, at least like 30% uh, something, uh, that's good. So uh, I'll split this talk into like a, a brief intro about like what BPF is. And uh, then I will focus more on like BPF and system D. And uh, uh, that's the part when I expect some of you will uh, disconnect, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, and so, uh, uh, Let's jump in. So, uh, BPF. So, what is this is why everybody is so exciting, excited about uh, BPF? Because this is uh, uh, a virtual machine like technology, uh, which, uh, how, which with the purpose to safely modify kernel behavior from the user space. Uh, so, it combines uh, two approaches, like a kernel and user space approach. Um, and uh, safely uh, means uh, that the code which a user uh, inject to a kernel um, is guaranteed not to crash, hang on, not to like uh, access some invalid memory addresses and so on. And uh, uh, applications are like major applications, networking and tracing. Um, so when a user wants to modify kernel behavior, what he do? Well, user write a program. And, uh, uh, okay, what about like the life cycle of this program? So what do you need to do in order your program to work? Uh, so you need to compile, you need to load this program to a kernel, you need to attach that program to some hook point. Uh, uh, then uh, don't forget to detach the program when you don't longer need it. And uh, uh, as soon as uh, there are no reference to this program, uh, kernel will unload it. So like uh, the ref count uh, is uh, essential uh, to keep in mind the program is alive as soon as there is a reference to it. Uh, uh, let's look into detail uh, how uh, the interaction between like user and uh, kernel space. So you have a program in C and you want this program to be loaded into kernel. Uh, what are the steps? Uh, so first step, you uh, need to uh, compile this program uh, into a BPF instruction set. So this is like BPF assembly language. Uh, it's based on like several instruction sets from several, several architectures. Uh, and you need to see Lanka LLVM. Uh, once you have uh, your program compiled, uh, you need uh, this bytecode to be loaded into kernel. And uh, uh, that's the place uh, when uh, uh, I think the most uh, uh, sophisticated part of BPF system kicks in. Your program needs to be verified uh, to make sure it is actually safe uh, to be loaded. Uh, so you have verifier, and uh, uh, after the verifier is done its job, you have uh, a JIT compiler, uh, which translates your kernel to uh, for the current platform. If uh, uh, platform is not supported, that's okay. Uh, there is uh, uh, an interpreter uh, which uh, uh, can also, uh, like, so you, so you can run your program with an interpreter. So once your program is loaded, uh, 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 it assigned a, a file descriptor and ref count uh, is greater than zero. Uh, 
remember like the life cycle, your program is uh, loaded uh, while you have reference to it. So this is like brief overview of BPF. Uh, like uh, any questions before I actually uh, jumped into like system D part? Okay, like you can ask them later. So, so what do we have in system D? Uh, so in system D we have uh, two sub two subsystems. We have uh, uh, BPF firewall and we have device control. So with BPF firewall, uh, you can uh, whitelist or like blacklist some IP addresses, uh, all of them if you want. Uh, with, BPA, with device control, you can specify, uh, okay, which devices we uh, want to support. So like, is it like read only? Uh, what are the policies and so on? Uh, so this is, this is two use cases which are present now in system D. Uh, what's the problem and why do we want to uh, touch it even further? Uh, it's because uh, the current uh, system D infra is tailored for those two use, for those use cases. Uh, and uh, basically, um, it's kind of frozen in time because, uh, okay, like the, the code was uh, taken from uh, kernel, uh, from UAPI and from like LVPF helpers. Uh, it was like copy pasted once and it exists there since then. Uh, and second, like, uh, it, it's not very... So do you see the right, right, right uh, hand side there? No? Oh, that's a shame. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this is actually a BPF microassembly. Uh, and... Uh, uh, sad you didn't see it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so BPF microassembly. This is uh, unfortunately the only way uh, you can uh, write uh, BPF programs in system D presently. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's a good way to learn about BPF technology. Um, so, for example, you will learn that, okay, uh, BPF uh, instruction set has like 11 registers, uh, but this is not very convenient to uh, maintain, to read. And uh, when I first looked into this code, I was very thankful for uh, the person who left comments. Uh, actually, this is counter. These are basically counters. Uh, so, uh, what are the good news? Uh, the good news is that there is some uh, custom BPF uh, uh, firewall support. Uh, it was added for uh, firewall use case. Uh, so you can uh, specify a path to BPF file system when your program is pinned. Uh, so it's pinned means uh, it's loaded uh, and it has valid file descriptor, uh, but this supports only uh, one BPF program type, uh, and you can al attach only to egress or ingress hook. And uh, uh, um, another important uh, uh, part of uh, BPF uh, uh, infra is flux. So currently, uh, present solution supports only multi-flux. Um, there is uh, override flux, uh, and uh, it's cool to uh, be able to override the BF programs as well. Uh, so, uh, what are the like goals of this work, and why do we want to proceed? Uh, so, we want uh, a user to be able to uh, uh, define, uh, to load and attach uh, uh, custom uh, C group programs. We want uh, a user to be able to attach to various uh, hook points. Uh, and to do it like simply, like easily. This is from the user side. And we want, we want systemd uh, developer uh, not to struggle with uh, maintaining BPF infra. So you, did, you don't need to like dig into like uh, uh, BPF instruction set to understand uh, what the hell is going on. Uh, also we want to uh, remember that uh, copy pasted code. Uh, uh, so we want new features out from the box. Uh, that's why, like, well, this is the final goals. 
but what about like milestones? Uh, so, if you remember the slide with BPF program lifecycle, uh, you can uh, uh, load, uh, you, you can compile load attached programs. So, currently, uh, we are in the milestone no number one, so we can attach programs. And uh, uh, advertisement, <laughs> I have a pull request, uh, which is cool to be reviewed. It basically expands uh, the BPF firewall into like other uh, BPF uh, um, uh, attached types and flags. So like this will close milestone number three. But actually we want more, we want more. So we want uh, uh, the programs not just to be attached, uh, we want the programs to be loaded and to be compiled as well. Uh, so, and, and in order to do that, uh, we need to be able to uh, feed systemd with uh, either object files, bytecode, or program in restricted C. And uh, this is a noble goal, but it's not that simple, uh, because like, remember copy-paste? Uh, this copy paste won't scale for like the uh, last three milestones, and we need the help from libbpf. Uh, so libbpf uh, is uh, uh, a user space library. Uh, you can think, think about it as a like set of wrappers um, upon uh, system uh, libbpf syscalls. So do all the like dirty job for you and uh, we're particularly interested in two like wrappers it's like uh, uh, the ability to load uh, uh, byte code from uh, buffer or like from path and also like with libpf Lib uh, is like very hot topic in the kernel uh, and uh, 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 for example, like new initiative is like CORE. It stands for compile once, run everywhere. Uh, so what you need to do is to like compile a program on your platform. Uh, then uh, libpf provides some guarantee that uh, your program will be able to load into other kernels as well. And uh, the cornerstone of compile once uh, run everywhere initiative is uh, BTF. Uh, BTF stands for uh, BPF type format. Uh, so, uh, so libpf is awesome, and why we don't have it right now? Well, we tried, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, it wasn't very successful uh, because uh, there is a lack of uh, a package. Uh, so currently, uh, the packaging of libpf is in progress. Uh, the first attempt was made. Uh, it was made uh, in the form of git sub module. So like basically you have two alternatives. You can uh, copy paste or you can uh, try a sub module, uh, which is better. Uh, but systemd has uh, pretty sophisticated tests, and uh, submodule approach didn't work because we have to modify the tests. So this is like a, a workaround which is too long. That's why uh, a tested package is better. Uh, and uh, the second uh, limitation is libpf is not tested well enough. Uh, well. At least uh, this submodule approach uh, showed us uh, that uh, we have problems uh, because the first thing um, that pull request did, uh, it crashed on some tests, on some sanitated, sanitated tests, and uh, we had some uh, upstreamed patches to fix that. Uh, and we um, uh, approve that there is a problem. And how do we want to address the testability problem? So for testability, uh, we need to check uh, that libbpf is uh, uh, compatible with different kernels. Uh, and uh, backward compatibility is a major concern because like when you, when like a kernel developer uh, 
runs uh, a new feature. He runs uh, self-tests from kernel against that. Uh, and uh, uh, this may not be enough because the feature may be compatible with older kernels. So what we want to do is we want to use Kimo. Uh, Kimo is uh, uh, virtualizing like infrastructure, uh, so we can test libpf against several kernels. And we want to pull, uh, port some kernel self-tests uh, into like uh, our testing infrastructure. Uh, then, in terms of package, packages, we want to switch to uh, libpf uh, package from a mirror. Uh, currently, uh, there are packages uh, at least for Debian and Fedora, but they are built from kernel sources. And uh, um, uh, so, uh, if you want to do testing, we want them to be built from the mirror, basically. Uh, okay. So, uh, and uh, the last thing I want to cover. Uh, so this was uh, this issue was raised uh, uh, in the pull request with Git sub module uh, is uh, LLVM dependency. So yeah, so I know that uh, some people concerned about okay, uh, we don't want LLVM runtime run dependency. That's why uh, let's uh, not uh, build C programs. Uh, let's just uh, store uh, bytecode. Well, bytecode is definitely better than uh, BPF programs being attached to BPF file system. Uh, but uh, there is a problem. You have to store like three entities instead of one. So you need to store uh, C program itself. You need to store uh, byte code and big and little endian, and you need to keep everything in sync. Um, and the point is, uh, you don't need to do that because there is no um, compile time dependency. Uh, there, there is no runtime dependency. There is, o o there is only compile time dependency for the VM. So, and uh, with the compile once run everywhere initiative. Uh, there are certain guarantees that uh, the code you compile uh, will run on uh, uh, with other kernels. Uh, so, uh, and also, like, mm, I think it will also be covered uh, in this conference. Uh, so, BPF support was recently added to uh, GCC, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, well. I say uh, let's not like uh, jump into it. Maybe like well, VM is something to be there for a while, uh, but something to keep in mind. Uh, so how to, uh, uh, yeah. So like implementation details. So we can just uh, make make a Mason build rule, uh, and this rule will be compile comp compiling. Uh, C code into uh, C string buffer, and with libpf we can just read uh, that byte code from that buffer. And uh, well, uh, there will be like, if you look into the slide, it will be milestone number number four. So we have uh, system D uh, with uh, libpf programs stored as uh, restricted C. Uh, this is these are the references. Uh, if you want to dig more, uh, I really like uh, Cilium Guide. Uh, it's a like great overview, like in depth overview. If you really like the technology, and yeah, that's it. Like questions. <laughs> Okay, the, you know, dealing with government customers, they really don't like the idea of having any type of compiler on uh, a system. Um, you mentioned mm -hmm. um, the object code and stuff. How, how close is that or getting to uh, or the restricted compiler where we'd only compile eBPF is, and, and have governments looked into whether they'd be willing to accept that or, yeah. 
So you don't need to compile in runtime. Uh, so you need to compile once. That's the goal. So you compile once, and uh, uh, the program is uh, 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 translated into like a hexam placeholder. Uh, means uh, uh, your Mason built ru rule dump the output of Silang into a stream. So you later can just uh, load the program from from that stream. So that me means basically you need it. You need, you need a build rule, uh, but you can uh, ship uh, like system D binary to prod machines without uh, them being like w without a lot of VM. So no runtime dependency. You need runtime dependency for for, for, for there is the, for tracing. You need that, but for a system to use case, uh, which is uh, networking mostly, you don't. Uh, but again, uh, we need libbpf for that. You might get your pull request pre-approved. Um, so uh, one question. Um, uh, as you mentioned, um, we have these two um, BPF programs currently in place, like the firewall and the, and the devices yeah. one. And in case of the firewall, all the actual IP addresses are stored in a BPF table. So taking the BPF code and building it with LLVM is going to be easy because um, the BPF code is actually going to be the same everywhere. So you can pre-compile and everything's good. But at least in the current implementation of the other part about the devices um, uh, uh, stuff, it actually, I mean, we generate the, the structure there and it's specific to what the policy is actually that shall be enforced, right? Like it looks up the major minor numbers of the device mm -hmm. nodes, mm -hmm. not in a table in an external one, but it actually generates it into the code, right? So what's your strategies there? Like, would, like if we adopt this, I mean, and I presume we would, um, uh, is the, is the assumption then that we change this all to become tables, or um, do you, what's the story there? Yeah, I think the idea is to, to use BPF maps. So whatever like uh, we want to provide from the user space, we use maps, a hash table. Yeah. Uh, so Are you going to work on that? <laughs> uh, y yes. <laughs> uh, there is. A, I don't have the strict deadlines, uh, but yeah, so th the goal is to like uh, get free from the uh, BPF microassembly. Yes, it's to rewrite uh, firewall and devices. Okay, that would be excellent. Yeah. I'm looking forward. Okay. <laughs> Commitments. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? No? Thank you, Yulia. Uh, thank you.